Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Today we're going to work on what we call renaming fractions. It's really very similar to what we did in the last section where we talked about equivalent fractions. And if you remember, we said that with fractions, you can multiply a fraction by anything you want as long as you multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. And when you do that, the fraction might look different, but in fact it's actually the same fraction. It represents the same amount of stuff. All right. So here we're going to do renaming fractions, and the best way to show you what we're talking about is just to give you a problem and then you'll understand quickly what we're doing. So what, what if we have the fraction 4 fifths, and on a quiz or a test you might see that it's equal to a fraction with a bottom number of 10. And what you want to do is you want to provide an answer, what would, be, what would the top number be here? So in other words, you have 4 fifths, and you're told that it's equal to another fraction with a bottom number of 10. And so it's your job to figure out, okay, if it's equal to another fraction with a bottom number of 10, what would the top number have to be to do that? Okay, so again, remember, you can multiply a fraction by anything you want as long as you do it to the top and the bottom. All right, so if you think about it, you have 4 fifths here. So let me go over here, 4 fifths. So we know that we're trying to get to a bottom number of 10. All right, what would we have to multiply by to give me 10 on the bottom? Well, I have a 5 here, so I would need to multiply by 2 to give me 10. But if I multiply by 2 on the bottom, then I must, must, must also do it to the top. That's the only way to keep these fractions equal. All right, and so if I do that, the top would become 8 and the bottom would become 10. So now I know that the answer that I'm seeking is 8 tenths. This is what you would circle on your test. So again, you're given a situation where you're, you're trying to figure out if this fraction and this fraction are equal, this bottom number is 10, what do I need to multiply this by to give me 10? I figure out that I have to multiply by 2. But if I multiply by 2 on the bottom, I have to also do it on the top, and that means it'll be 8 tenths. So if I look at 8 tenths of a pizza and 4 fifths of a pizza, it represents the same amount of pizza. That's basically the bottom line. Let's do another problem. Let's say that I have 2 thirds, and I'm claiming that's equal to another fraction with a bottom number of 12. And I'd like to figure out what is this uh, fraction have to have on the top to make this happen. So, Again, what I usually do is go off to the side, write my two-thirds down, because that's what I'm starting with. And I look at it and I say, all right, I'm trying to get from 3 to 12. What do I have to multiply to do that? 3 times what is going to give me 12? Well, I'm going to have to multiply by 4, because 4 times 3 is 12. But if I do this, I'm going to also need to multiply by 4 on the top. That's the only way to keep it balanced. And when I do this, 4 times 2 is 8. The bottom number is 12. So this, again, is going to be 8 twelfths. All right? Uh, so this fraction, 8 twelfths, is the same as 2 thirds. So let's go on and move into another one. Let's say I have 1 ninth, and I'm claiming that it's equal to a fraction with a 5 on the top, and I'm trying to figure out what would be on the bottom there. Okay, what number would be on the bottom to make these two fractions equal? So the, the best way the, to proceed is you start with your 1 ninth and you look at it and you say, all right, I'm trying to get to 5 on the top. What do I have to multiply here to give me a 5? Well, I'll need to multiply 